All right, so here we have the video key for the re review that you were supposed to do on Wednesday. All right, um, for the first three problems that we're going to do, the sum and difference of sine and cosine, um, I might use different values than you, but we should end up with the same numerical answer. Okay, so the process still should be the same. It's just you might have different numbers using it because you might have used different numbers to get to 11. All right, if we're adding up to adding or subtracting to 11 and they both have have to be reducible with 12. I'm going to use 8 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. Okay, they're reduced to 2 pi over 3 and pi over 4. All right, so we're doing sine and plus. If you had your um, semester 2 formula sheet, it's going to look like this when you put them in place. You have sine of 2. 2 pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4 plus cosine of 2 pi over 3 and sine of pi over 4. So you're just putting all those values into the formula based on uh, whatever's in the formula sheet. All right, now we've got to find the values, the x, y values of each of these terms. So the sine of 2 pi over 3, we're looking at 2 pi over 3. Look at the y value, we have root 3 over 2. For cosine of pi over 4, we're looking at the x term, which is root 2 over 2. All right, plus the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Okay, we multiply the numerators and the denominators. We're going to get the square root of 6 over 4. And then this minus sign is going to make this minus root 2 over 4. And then we just combine the two fractions because they have the common denominator. We show that we're combining. We don't actually combine the square root of 6 and the square root of 2. We just show that they are being subtracted. Over common denominator of 4. And that is your answer. All right. For the second question, we have to get something that is negative 5 pi over 12. Okay, so we can use, um, let's see, what can we use? Draw a blank. Uh, we can use 8 pi, no, I lied. We can use 3 pi over 12 minus 8 pi over 12. That'll give us negative 5. And then we have pi over 4 minus 2 pi over 3. Okay, so now again, we use our formula sheet. We do the cosine with a minus on the formula sheet. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be the cosine of pi over 4 uh, times the cosine of 2 pi over 3. plus the sine of pi over 4 times the sine of 2 pi over 3. All right. Again, we look at the unit circle to find the values associated with these cosine and sine terms. All right. So the cosine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. Plus the sine of pi over 4 is going to be root 2 over 2. And the sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be root 3 over 2. Okay, if we can multiply the tops, you're going to get negative root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. Combine the fractions, you're going to get root, negative root 2 plus root 6 over 4. There you go. All right, and number seven, the nice thing is we don't have to find two, two uh, terms that add or subtract to something else because these are our two terms. We're doing uh, sine and then minus for sum and difference. So when we do this, we look at the formula for sum and minus. We're going to get sine of x because this is the x term, this is the y term. So we have sine of x. Um, let's see here. It says cosine of y. So it's cosine of 3 pi over 2. All 
run a space almost. Uh, minus the cosine of x, so x times the sine of 3 pi over 2. Sorry, we ran out of space. Okay. <clears throat> now, the cosine and sine of x both will stay the same. All right, and then the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0, It's the x value, minus the cosine of x stays the same, and the sine of th 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So sine of x times 0 is 0, that goes away, and then you have negative times cosine of x times negative 1, which gives you just cosine of x. And that is your answer for the, la the third question. Okay. All right. Now the equations. Okay, again, you're going to need your unit circle to solve these equations. You're just trying to solve for either sine, cosine, or tangent, whatever it might be. And they're going to equal a number, and that number is going to correspond to a value on the unit circle. So here we have 5 sine of x plus root 3 equals 3 sine of x. We're going to subtract the 3. Make this big. 3 sine of x either side, okay, and we're going to subtract the root 3 to the other side as well. So 5 sine of x minus 3 sine of x is 2 sine of x, and that's going to equal negative root 3. All right. To solve for sine of x, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So sine of x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to use our unit circle to find out where the sine value is going to be, what radians the sine value is going to be, negative root 3 over 2. Okay, and that is going to be at two spots. So we have 4 pi over 3, and we have 5 pi over 3. And that's it. Okay, um, next one. <clears throat> so we're going to solve for cosine squared first by dividing by 4. So we have cosine squared of x is equal to 3 over 4. Now to get the cosine by itself, you're going to square root both sides. So the square root and square root will go away. If cosine of x is equal to... All right, so now what we can do on the other side is the square root of 3 doesn't get reduced. It's just the square root of 3. But the square root of 4 is 2. And because we squirted both sides of an equation, it's going to be plus or minus. Now we can go to our unit circle and find out where the cosine of x is going to be plus or minus root 3 over 2. Okay, so we have pi over 6. We have 5 pi over 6. We have 7 pi over 6. And finally, we have 11 pi over 6. It's going to be all the pi over 6's are going to be the answer. All right. Next one. Same kind of concept as the last one. We want to get the cosine squared x by itself by we're adding 1 to both sides. So we have 1. Again, because we're square rooting both sides, to get rid of the square root sign, or sorry, to get rid of the square root sign, so we have cosine of x is equal to, now the square root of 1 is just 1, but please, again, don't forget that if you're square rooting both sides of an equal sign, you have to put plus or minus. So now we're going to look at our unit circle and find out where cosine is positive or negative 1. And that's actually in three places. There's 0 pi, which we don't need to put the pi on. There is pi, and there is 2 pi. So three spots. Um, number 7. All right, now this one looks a little more complicated. All right. The reason being is because we're going to bring the sine, this negative sine x to the other side. We're going to add sine of x. But because the first one is a sine squared and the one we're adding is just regular sine, they're not going to be combined. Because they're not like terms. And it equals zero because that cancels out. Now what you should see is that you have two sine values and you have a greatest common factor of sine. So we're going to take one out. All right. If I took one out of the two sine squared x, we're going to let, be left with two sine of x. Plus we took a sine out of sine, which gives me left with one. 
All right. So now we have two equations. We have the sine of x equals 0 as a factor, and we have 2 sine of x plus 1 equals 0 as a factor. We solve this other factor for sine of x. We're going to subtract 1 and divide by 2 to get it by itself. Now we have to find two different answers. We've got to find sine of x where it's, where it's is 0, so the y value is 0. It's going to have three answers. It's going to have 0, pi, and 2 pi. All right, we also have to find out where sine is negative 1 half. And that's going to be at 7 pi over 6, and it's going to be at 11 pi over 6. And that is the solvent. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the inverse. So for inverse, remember, you're restricted in your domain of which part of the unit circle you're looking at. For sine, you're looking at the right half of the unit circle. So you want to find out what radian is going to be for sine at negative root 2 over 2. And that's going to be at 7 pi over 4, but because we had to go backwards to get there and not all the way around the unit circle, because remember, we're going... Here's our unit circle. Here's where it would be. Back up. Here's it would be, but we had to go backwards to get there. So this is going to be actually negative pi over 4. That's what we're going to put, negative pi over 4. And that is our answer. Okay. Number 9. So tangent. Again, tangent is... <clears throat> Restricted in its domain for the right half of the unit circle, the right side. To get negative 1, we had to go here and backwards. Okay, because you're looking for where root 2 over 2 is divided by root 2 over 2, but one of them is negative. So this is going to be negative pi over 4. All right, now what we're going to do is figure out what the sine of negative pi over 4 is. So we're looking at the y value of negative pi over 4, and the y value is going to be negative root 2 over 2. So basically you're going back and forth between points and radians. All right, the last one here, we have inverse sine of 1 half. Again, for, for sine, you're looking at the right-hand side of the unit circle. For 1 half, for the y term, is going to be pi over 6. Okay, but we have all this other stuff going on. So we have sine of pi over 6, and then the inverse cosine of whatever the answer that was. All right, now we're looking at the sine of pi over 6, which is going to be, again, 1 half. So now we're going to find the inverse cosine of 1 half. Now for cosine, for inverse cosine, you're only looking at the top half of the unit circle, the top two quadrants, okay? So at 1 half, where is 1 half for cosine? And that is going to be at pi over 3. And you're done. All right, last problem is tangent sum and difference. Okay, so again, you're going to need your unit or your uh, formula sheet for second semester. All right, we're going to use um, 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. They're both reducible by using 12. And we're going to get pi over 3. We're going to get plus pi over 4. Okay. Now, because we're adding, we're using the top uh, signs for tangent. All right. So this is what our formula will look like. Uh, let's put it right here. So we have tangent of x, which is going to be tangent of pi over 3. All right. And the top sign is going to be plus tangent of pi over 4. In the bottom of our fraction, we're going to have 1. It's going to be minus tangent of pi over 3 times tangent of pi over 4. Okay, so now what we need to do in this case, we could figure out, remember what tangent of pi over 3 and pi over 4 is. So I want to put that over on the left-hand side here. So for pi over 3... All right, the tangent is going to be on our unit circle. All right, so we have y divided by x. So we have root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. 
So we have our complex fraction. We're going to multiply by its reciprocal of the denominator. This all cancels. The 2's cancel, and we're left with root 3. All right, for pi over 4, for tangent, it's going to be root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, which is nice because when you do the same thing as we did in the previous part, or the for pi over 3, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So, and what happens is everything cancels out, which means you get 1. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the stuff in our equation with the tangent of pi over 3s and all that stuff with our two values that we just found. So for tangent of pi over 3, it's going to be root 3. The tangent of pi over 4 is 1. On the bottom of our fraction, we have 1 minus the tangent of pi over 3 is root 3 times the tangent of pi over 4, which is just 1. Now this problem is going to be easier than some of the other ones we've done because they're not fractions in fractions. So it's, we're not dealing with root 3 over 3. We're just dealing with root 3 with no denominator. Okay, so right here, what we have to do next is we can't leave that square root on the bottom of our fraction. So this is the place where we multiply by the conjugate. So the conjugate is the same terms at the bottom. If we multiply root 3 times 1, it's just going to be root 3. So it's the same terms at the bottom, but we're going to change the sign in between them. Again, this has nothing to do with the numerator of our fraction. It has everything to do with the denominator of our fraction. So now we multiply everything out. Root 3 times 1 is root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is root 9, and the square root of 9 is just 3. 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times root 3 is just root 3. On the bottom of our fraction, 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 3. Negative root 3 times 1 is negative root 3. And negative three, root 3 times negative, or sorry, negative root 3 times positive root 3 is negative root 9, and the square root of 9 is just 3. Okay? Again, the conjugate does what it's supposed to, which is get rid of these two terms on the bottom. They will cancel each other out, and now we can combine the like terms on the top and the bottom. So we have root 3 plus root 3. There are two of them, so that is 2 root 3. And then 3 plus 1 is 4. On the bottom, we have 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. All right, and now because the 2 and the 4 and the negative 2 are all numbers that can be reduced, we're not worried about the square root part. We have to reduce it. So 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1 root 3. And 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. And this is our answer. Now, if you have 2, negative 2 minus root 3, that's fine as well. Either way, it would be the same thing. Okay, and that brings us to the end of this review from the, so far, what we've had in this last unit. All right?